Welcome back once again to Japan. If you didn't see the other episodes from this trip, you can find them on the channel. Today, we're exploring all over Kyoto and Osaka, as well as going to Universal to see the Nintendo World. How it happened, but we found the best video game store in Japan, at least that we've seen, but we'll get to that. It's a beautiful morning in Kyoto and Kim and I are ready for a full day of game hunting around Kyoto. The first place is a store called Ed On. It's inside a complex and it's a bunch of floors, but the entire basement floor is video games, anime, nerd stuff. The first thing we saw was a gaming chair, like a theater chair. You sit in it and there's a giant TV in front of you, but all the speakers are on the inside of the seat and it makes this effect like you're inside a movie theater. $13,000 and I wish this would fit in my suitcase. <laughs> so it's Charmeleon and oh then my Char Aunt Charizard. Charizard. Yeah, I, I always get those confused. <clears throat> oh, hello and welcome back to Pokemon TV, sponsored by the Pokemon Company International. I'm Carl. And I'm just happy to be here. We've seen Wood enjoying a lot of Japan so far, but along with that, experiencing a lot of exciting Pokemon adventures. Oh, that's right, Carl. So we've seen him head to Tokyo's Pokemon Center, try his luck on some Pokemon oh. gotchas, all the while playing Pokemon Go on the go. <laughs> that's right, happy to be here. Gotta catch them all, am I right? Well, thankfully for our viewers, you don't gotta travel all the way to Japan to enjoy Pokemon. Oh, that's right again, Carl! They can pick up a copy of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet for Nintendo Switch on their console and catch battle and train Pokemon in the Paldea region anywhere in the world. Oh, and, and don't forget that new DLC, Hidden Treasures of Area Zero, part one, the Till Mask, which gives players even more of the world oh, yeah, to no, explore. 100%. Does that DLC also work on the Switch? Yes. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Oh, great. No. I mean, what would be the alternative hmm? to huh? that? What's? No, I'm saying hmm? like, if it didn't work on the Switch with the base game, what uh, would the alternative be uh, to... Uh, um. From October 27th to November 1st, players can participate in special five-star Miss Magius tier raids, plus the special <laughs> Halloween outbreak featuring four special Pokemon, Mimikyu, Phantom, Drifloon, and Gravard. And there will be even more high-level terror raids happening throughout the year. So make sure you train your Pokemon to get strong for these battles. Click the link below to learn more about the seven-star terror raids plus the new DLC today. Now let's get back to our man in Japan. This yeah. has been Pokemon TV and we'll see you next time. Seriously, like the Wii U? Where did you think it was going you to work? You think my name is happy to be here. I don't want to hear it from I you. you were. Really? So Charizard. it's Charmander it's then Charizard. 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 Charmeleon? Charmeleon? Charizard. Charmander's first. How, how, what? It's not you my job to remember. You work at Pokemon TV. I know I said this already, but I can't get over the Nintendo Switch section in all of these stores because they all go so hard with it. For one, they go all out on the Nintendo area. It's just fully decorated. It goes all the way back there to all the way over here. But not only do they have new games, they have a ton of used games to look through. This is so cool. I do see this one that looks awesome. The art style is fantastic, but it's sold out. I don't know what happened to this store. It's been ravaged. Everything I'd like to buy is sold out. This looks awesome. I don't even know what it is, but the artwork on it is so cool. And I've been meaning to buy Coffee Talk for a while. I mean, I can look somewhere else, but so many things here are sold out. I see no place for bravery. It's a 
pixel art game that I have heard of, but it just didn't get a physical release outside of Japan. Maglem Lord, under 10 bucks. I don't know what it is. I'm not even sure if I'll like it, but I think I'm just gonna grab it and take a gamble on it. Something else that's only about $8, YouTuber Life 2. We happened to make a Let's Play video of the first one on the channel a while back, and it did surprisingly well. So when the second game came out, we made a video of that too. They're actually not too bad either. Strangely fleshed out, decent games. I have seen these on the trip so far. The Hori Split Pad Fit. Here there's a bunch of colors, including Pikachu and Gengar. But there are these clear evolution ones. I'm not 100% sure if you can get these in America or not. I'm trying to buy only Japan things here. I'm gonna get them anyway because they're cool. After I bought my games, Kim and I spent a while in this store looking at the toys, the figures, doing a bunch of gotchas. Kim's also obsessed with these little animal critter things. I kind of want this because it's just really cute. I tried once again to get my cone Kirby and I failed again. I can't get this guy. After we leave Edon, we head over to Shinkaio Goku. There's a shopping street over there that has a pig cafe. We're not going to that. We're just walking down the street to see what they have. And what they have is more gotchas. There was this really cool full Pokemon one. There's a Vulpix, Bulbasaur, Diglett, the Teddy. Teddy saw, and a Pikachu. You know, I talk about Eevee a lot. I think Vulpix is my second favorite Pokemon. And I wanted this because it's adorable. We got all of them. Let's go. Right. Around the corner from this street is a Book Off. So this is Book Off Plus in Kyoto. We love Book Offs. The best comparison is it's like half price books. If it had anime and figures and manga and video games, this whole aisle is Switch. I don't have anything that I haven't already found, but I kind of want to buy some anime figures because they have a Gone and Killua, the cheap deepest I've seen them on this trip. I feel like they've been taunting me this whole trip, so I'm just gonna go ahead and grab them here. Immediately as we walk in the video game section, E finds a boxed Tetris for like $3. I found Yokai Watch 1 on the Switch, but it was some weird, like, greatest hits, level 5, the best edition. I might be silly and find out that this was the only version of this, but I didn't like the way the box looked. I'm grabbing my Hunter figures, I'm grabbing some video games, and we're getting out of Book Off because we have a lot of places to visit. And the next one is a bit of a walk away. It's called Suragaya. As far as I can tell, it's a new and used video game store. And this store felt like walking into a mom and pop video game store. The prices reflected that. I mean, they were all over the place. Some of the collectible things were really expensive and then some of them were really affordable. This is one of the Amiibos I've been trying to find, a Japanese exclusive, and apparently it's very Japanese expensive. Fate and Kados 2, it's only 32,000 yen here. There's also Pikmin for 1,800 yen, which is about 10 bucks. I did find Gotcha Force on GameCube for 72,000 yen, which is about 50 bucks. Did not expect to become a GameCube collector on this trip. I'm down for anything that doesn't look like a visual novel because I could pull a random game out of here and chances are it's a visual novel. So I just found this one called Giraffe and Annika, which looks like a farming game with some battling in it. 2,000 yen is about $12. It looks pretty enough to go on the shelf at the very least. And I found another cheap Switch game here for 1,800 yen. It looks like a spooky kind of horror game maybe, but also very cutesy. I can't really tell what game it is. I'll find out when I play it. Obviously really glad that we walked so far out of our way to find this store. It was really worth it and definitely somewhere that I'll revisit when I go back. Now we're walking another 20 minutes actually to get to a Pokemon Center. This is Kyoto's Pokemon Center. This one had the three starter Pokemon and a nice little model near the back of the store. It also had a giant Ho-Oh that had been signed on the back by Pokemon's creator and also a giant Lugia. Oh also like a really cute flock detective Pikachu. They also had a ton of stuff to buy too. Plushies, merch, you name it. But again, every Pokemon Center we go to we got a crazy line that I'm not willing to wait in. So instead, why don't we just book off to another book off? And again, another giant wall of Nintendo Switch games for me to go through. I even found a Japanese arc for the Switch. I would not expect to see a physical of that game here. It just doesn't seem like a game that I feel like Japan would be interested in. I've convinced Bob to try Yokai Watch 4. They have the base version here for 1800, so I'm gonna grab that for him as a little gift. He had told me that he liked the idea of me playing Yokai Watch 4 and kind of learning Japanese that way and said, if you 
you find the base version, buy that for me. Next, I found Eastwood. This game got a physical in Japan long before I got a physical in America, and I actually imported it for a video I made where I spent a bunch of money buying things from PlayAsia. I also actually wasn't sure if I had bought it, and I had to watch my video back in the store. Couldn't remember if I had that or not. I checked my video. I do. We are almost done with this massive day of video game hunting, but we stumbled into a mall and didn't expect to find Gotcha Machine Heaven. Kim really wanted this kangaroo cutting onions with a little baby Joey in his pouch. The Joey was wearing goggles to protect his eyes from the onions. There was a Back to the Future one that had four different kinds of DeLoreans, so obviously I had to get at least one of those. After going through all these gotchas for a long time, we decided we should probably head to bed because we have to be up early to Universal Studios. As we walked into the park, we saw the giant rotating Universal Studios globe. We were there as they opened, and there was already a massive line. And after finally entering the park, the very first thing we see is a popcorn vendor. We've been in here maybe five seconds, and we saw Mario popcorn, but there's a Mario Kart popcorn tub, so I'm waiting for that. Okay, this is awesome. Why is this My a tub? Tub? Oh yeah. my god. Oh, you got caramel too? Hell yeah. Let's go. <laughs> oh, good. It's actually good too. Yeah. We just got here and now we have too much stuff to carry. Yeah. Mario had bled through the rest of the park. We're in the gift store at Universal for Mario and they have so many cool things. So many snack boxes that are designed to look like parts of the Mario universe. Hear me out. <laughs> Do you think I now look like I belong here. Yes, you look <laughs> Yes, cute. it looks like it wants to be Mickey ears. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. <laughs> it is really cool to walk around Universal and see how much Nintendo is represented all around the theme park. I didn't expect that. There was a giant stage where DJ Pikachu was breaking it down funky style. <laughs> There's so much Nintendo around this park, it may as well be Universal and Nintendo's theme park. But now it's our time to go into the Super Nintendo world. It's cool just walking up the trail to get there. They have arrows, and it's the arrows from Super Mario World. High scores on the ground as you're walking around. Not really sure what those mean. Someone smarter than me will probably leave it in the comment section. We just got into Nintendo World, and we're waiting in the line to get our bracelet wristband that'll let us interact with the rest of the park. So we just got our bands, I got Luigi, Kim got Yoshi, to let us interact with the whole park. All right, now I look like I'm the doc from Back to the Future. I can't explain what it's like to walk in to Super Nintendo World. As you start walking through the tunnel, there's all these LED lights above you. As you pop out of the tunnel, you're inside Peach's Castle. It looks just like you're inside Mario 64. As you walk out, I mean, the footage alone, I don't think I can explain it any better than what you're seeing other than imagine actually standing in the middle of this. You're inside the Mushroom Kingdom. It feels like you're there. Like like chills, like this for real. Crazy. Yeah. We all just stepped out, just straight into all of this, and it is by far the coolest part of the entire park. I guess not even close. It is insane how big it is. I'm not even that big of a Mario guy. You guys know this. But even I was transformed into a Mario fan for the day. I felt a wave of nostalgia. Still growing up with the NES Marios and really loving them, of course. Now being here and standing in the Mushroom Kingdom, I felt overwhelmed. E was basically in tears. Kim was absolutely speechless. They did such a great job. We didn't have too long to explore the park before we had the joy of walking in to Bowser's Castle. This is actually the start of the line, the Mario Kart ride. It is literally like a 10 minute walk inside Bowser's Castle. Each section of it more detailed than the last. Then it opens up again into some sort of library with figures and statues hidden in every 
Street corner. We walked through some furnace area where it's like a workshop where they build the bomb arms and the bullet bills. They gave us this Mario visor to put on our heads. And then there were loads of these screens and it looked like you were in the Mario Kart TV. That then opened up into a room where all of the players were standing in this dome area and they showed an instructional video on how to play the ride. Now the ride is really cool. You sit in a Mario Kart that has four seats so you can play with three other people. You clip a visor into the band that they give you and the visor has a screen in front of it that's see-through. You see augmented reality. So it looks like you're in Mario Kart because you can see other Mario Karts in the visor. It'll tell you you need to go left or right and if you as a team all steer in the right direction you'll get more coins and more shells and then you can use the buttons on the steering wheel to fire those shells and the more enemies you hit and the better you do playing the game the more coins you get you win the game. Try to record it on my phone as best I could. Again you can't see anything that's actually happening though because it was all happening right in front of my eyes. But you get a general idea of what the ride feels and looks like. After you get off the ride it opened up into a really cool Mario Kart gift shop. I bought a Universal Studios Mario Kart trophy because I had to. We won the ride. I deserved my trophy. That was pretty much everything we did. Immediately after the Mario Kart ride we went down and tried to eat at Toad's Cafe because we were really hungry and the wait time was 19 minutes. This was technically our last day in Japan. We decided it was probably a good idea to call it here and head into Osaka to do the Nintendo store and a bunch of other video game stores that I had found. We caught a train straight to Nintendo Osaka and this one was pretty much the same as the Tokyo store. The one thing I really wanted is they had a Zelda mug. It was the face of like nine Koroks on this nice green mug. Sadly, they were sold out and that was the only thing I really wanted. There's also a Pokemon Center attached to this Nintendo store, but it's the same stuff again. It's a bunch of stuffies and a really long line. So since we've already done Nintendo and Pokemon a bunch, we're gonna get out of here. Up north, completely out of the way, is another Surugaya, just like last time. I wanna also say it was a 20 minute walk to get there and it was a beautiful walk. We walked past a fun Lego store, but also just some really nice areas. We walk into this mall and go up to the escalator. Yesterday, Kim and I found a really cool specialty store with a bunch of games and there's another one here in Osaka. And look at this place, it is crazy. I can already tell this is huge. All right, I'm gonna find the Switch games. I'm gonna find the Switch games now, bye. They have boxed Game Boy Color games here like Zelda, Mega Man. We've been in this store for like five minutes. It's amazing. It's like a whole collection of boxed Game Boy Advance here. Five boxed mother games. There's like a whole wall of boxed Game & Watches. I'm literally sweating and not because of the heat anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's only 5,000. The condition of all of them is so nice. Everything individually wrapped. So I don't know much about the Wonder Swan handheld that was only released in Japan, but I do know that finding an entire section of pristine boxed Wonder Swan games is insane. Hunter x Hunter is my favorite anime. They didn't make any games for it, but apparently they did on Wonder Swan. You know, this store is crazy because we've been in here like 20 minutes and I actually forgot about the Switch. This has the most of anything that we've seen so far. At this point, I'm down to just look through the whole store. I just found my favorite Final Fantasy game for less than one dollar. My brain's breaking a little. We're in a dollar section. That's all less than a dollar. Wait, what? Are these broken? Are they missing discs? There were a ton of loose GameCube discs. Those were only a dollar. Then a 64 section with Hey You Pikachu, Mario Party 3. These were all 70 cents as well. I want to say I'm well aware that these games are probably only worth this price or that something up here says all broken. It sounds like these don't work, but I'm looking at all the discs and they have barely any scratches. The carts look fine. It would be fun to get these home and see if they are broken. And maybe they think they are. Maybe I can do something with them. Also, you know the store has a lot of stuff when even the 360 section is pretty big. They do not really have Xbox games here. And by here, I mean Japan, not here, because here apparently they do. They had a whole wall with boxed Super Famicom games. Then I got stuck in their GameCube section. I'm losing my mind. This store is awesome. There's so much GameCube. I'm only just now realizing this because I saw this. This is Rune 2. I can tell by the cover art is actually Lost Kingdoms 2, which is one of my favorite childhood GameCube games. I don't know why it's like this though, but they have Rune 1, which is Lost Kingdoms 1. 
and it's also only like five bucks. It's one of my all time favorites. I don't know anyone else that loves them the way that I do. It was a card based JRPG. Apparently in Japan, they were called Room. I didn't know that until I saw this. I didn't want to buy this disc thing though, because I really didn't know what I was looking at. I'm learning and discovering things in this store because I've just never seen this stuff before. Jungle Beat is about two bucks. I, I... I don't know if I have this. I might have... I don't remember seeing it, so... I don't know. Oh, there it is. This store has like everything. It has like every game. Both Rune 1 and Rune 2 right here in this store. I found the original Bait and Kados for only a thousand yen, as well as Super Mario Sunshine for the same price. Kim found a boxed Yoshi Story for 1300 yen. They had Biohazard for 600 yen. Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles for $2. What the hell? This whole thing's only like $5. <laughs> this is going to be the biggest per purchase I make in Japan ever. There's Pokemon Stadium 2 for like $15. I'm not going to get that. There's Donkey Kong 64 for like $5. Mm -hmm. What I am getting is the stack of GameCube, Paper Mario, Mario Party 3. They also have this, but it's more. Oh, what is that? Mario Kart 64? Yeah, it comes with a controller. With a controller? Yeah. <laughs> At this point, I had messaged everyone that we were with earlier in the day because they'd stayed in the park when we left. And I told them, you guys have to come and get some of this. I'm not done with the video games at all, but I want to look around the store some more. And I just can't believe how big it is and how much stuff they have. They have a plushie section, aisles and aisles of anime figures. They have miscellaneous sections with cool collectibles from all the cafes around Japan and gotcha machines and Nintendo stores and Pokemon stores. They had a whole wall of bins where everything in them was only a dollar or two. Oh. oh, hi. You didn't tell me. I told, I, I showed you as much as I could. Everything's so cheap. I, I, I did tell you that. This Bob. is insane. For, I, I might get this. Bob. I might get this. This place is insane. I know, this is crazy. I'm losing my mind. What is that? Oh no, That is a bit. with a switch? That is a bit of an oh no moment. Happy holidays, Pokemon Scarlet. I'm gonna have to Google that. I mean, there was a Scarlet and Violet switch, wasn't there? So unbelievably, on like the last day of this trip, I think I just found a switch I've never seen before. A happy holidays, not Violet. It just says P-O. I'm not sure what the next word is. Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet. This guy is, it's why I keep him around. I've Googled, this is the only thing I can find. No information, but just a listing on eBay for $600. It looks like when you lift open the top, there's the game as well as a little card or something. But this is 600, that's about 300. I think it's symbolism if I get another Switch I technically don't have at the end of my trip. At the start of all of this, I said, there is probably a really cool Switch that released in Japan that I've never even heard of or seen before. So I think I'm just hoping to be wowed and surprised by something at some point on this trip. And then in this random store, for the first time I see this box. I've never seen this before. So what it is, it's a white OLED switch. I'm not sure why it's not the Pokemon Special Edition, but it's a sleeve containing what's inside, which is the switch and then a copy of Scarlet and Violet. I'm gonna fast forward a little bit just to now to tell you what this is. On Console Variant's website, they consider the curve Kirby box a variant switch. So surely this counts too. After a lot more Googling once I got back to this hotel, I managed to find one tweet that says, oh, I guess Japan Amazon is selling a Happy Holidays Nintendo Switch OLED. So Amazon did this, I guess, in Japan. I think this is so cool. I really didn't think I would be able to find anything Switch console themed that I didn't already have or I didn't know about. And apparently Apparently no one knows about it because there's nothing about it online. This is easily the biggest purchase I've ever made in Japan. Some of the coolest stuff I ever got at a store. We, I don't want to say discovered, but we kind of did. It is so cool that I almost don't want to tell you guys to blow the spot. <laughs> gatekeep. But it's so good. There was another guy, another English speaking guy in here before that recognized us and said that he comes here all the time because unlike Akihabara, which blows the prices out, all these are affordable. And I'm now realizing everything we've ever bought in Japan has been overpriced. I thought it was cheap because it's cheap in comparison, but it's not this cheap. It's not like this, no. I'm going back in for more. No. Bob, Hannah, Kim, and I decided to Uber back to the Nintendo Hotel. And in a weird universal 
moment of symbolism, we went right past the Nintendo headquarters. I think it was just meant to happen. I wanted to see the Nintendo headquarters while we were here, like the actual current one. And since you can't go in, that was good enough. morning. It's the last day of a very long trip. It's been exhausting. It's been therapeutic. It's helped my and Kim's mental space so much. We didn't think we could do this trip. Not only did we do it, we absolutely crushed it and had so much fun. We went to Universal yesterday and went to Nintendo World, which was like a religious experience. It was so cool. It was a really nice time getting to hang out with everyone, a nice time getting to spend with Kim. We both love Japan so much and I appreciate this country so much and I can't wait to come back. I was re-watching my vlogs from last time and there was a moment where I said my heart was so full and I kind of cringed a little bit. I was like, oh, that's such a cringy thing to say. That was four years ago and I guess I don't remember it as well as I did then because as I sit here right now and I think about everything we just did again, my heart is full again. Yeah, I guess this is something we're gonna have to keep doing because I really do enjoy it. I didn't talk about it much in these vlogs, but you guys know I've been dealing with a ton of anxiety. You know, just... I couldn't leave my house for a while. Just going to New York to do the podcast was like terrifying, but like I was doing it and getting better at it. And I worked all my way all the way up to catching a flight and I was terrified for that. But I did it. Kim and I both did it. This trip meant a lot more to me than I've even said in these videos. And until the next set of Japan vlogs, like, comment, subscribe. Jane, matashita. But I won't actually see you tomorrow. I keep saying that because it's one of the only ways I know of saying goodbye. Sayonara feels wrong, because no one says it. I said that last time, but ugh, okay.